Samuel 1, part 3. The Lord rejects Saul. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. And he took Agog, the king of the Amalekites, alive. But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fattened calves, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. The word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I made Samuel king, for he has turned back from following me, and has not performed my commandments. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you. The Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And Samuel turned to go away. Saul seized the skirt of his robe and tore it. And it tore. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you. Samuel hacked Agag to pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. And Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. <clears throat> David anointed king. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as a man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. There yet remains the youngest. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and he had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for he, this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. David in Samuel's service. <clears throat> now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's servant said, Seek out a man who is skillful in playing the leery. And when the harmful spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will be well. Behold, I have seen the a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing. David took the leery and played it with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the harmful spirit departed from him. David and Goliath. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of his coat was five thousand shekels of bronze, and he had bronze armors on his legs, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. You, your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. You are but, you are but a youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and when there came a lion or a bear, and he took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him, and delivered it out of its mouth. <clears throat> and if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck both down lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied, defiled defied the armies of the living God. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his separate pouch. He, his sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. 
And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and s struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sunk into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. David and Jonathan's Friendship Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him, so that Saul sent him over the men of war. And this was good in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Saul's Jealousy of David <clears throat> As they were coming home, when David returned from striking down the Philistine, the woman came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing. And the women sang, Saul has struck down his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very angry, and said, and, and this saying displeased him. And Saul, eyed da and Saul eyed David from that day on. The next day a harmful spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and Saul hurled his spear for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him. And David had success in all his undertakings. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for he went out and came in before them. David marries Michelle. Michael, Michelle, I don't know. Michael, Michelle. Then Saul said to David, here's... My elder daughter, Merab, I will give her to you for a wife. But at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, she was given to Adriel, the Mehetharite, for a wife. Now Saul's daughter, Michal, loved David. Saul thought, let me give her to him, that she may be a snare for him. And Saul said, thus shall you say to David, the king desires no bride price except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. David arose and went along with his men and killed two hundred of the Philistines. And Saul gave him his daughter, Mike, Michal, for her wife. Saul tries to kill David. <clears throat> and Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son, and to all the servants and they, that they should kill David. And Jonathan told David, then a harmful spirit from the Lord came upon Saul, and David was playing the leery, and Saul sought to spin to pin David to the wall, and David fled and escaped. But Michal, David's wife, told him, If you do not escape, you will be killed. So Michal let David down through the window. Now David fled and escaped, and he came to Samuel at Ramah. And it was told Saul, Behold, David is at Nioth in Ramah and Saul sent messengers again the third time and they also prophesied and he went there and the spirit of the God came upon him also and he and as he went he prophesied until till he came to Naoth in Ramah and he too stripped off his clothes and he too prophesied before Samuel and lay naked on all that day and all that night thus it is said I uh, is Saul also among the prophets Jonathan warns David then Jonathan said to him, Tomorrow is the new moon, and you will be missed, because you, your seat will be empty. On the third day, go down quickly to the place where you hid yourself when the matter was in hand, and remain beside the stone heap. And I will shoot <clears throat> three arrows to the side of it, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send the young man, saying, Go find the arrows. If I say to the young man, Look, the arrows are on the side of you, take them. Then you are to come, for as the Lord lives, it is safe for you, and there is no danger. But if I say to the youth, Look, the arrows are beyond you, then go, for the Lord has sent you away. So David hid himself in the field, and Saul said to Jonathan his son, Why has not the son of Jesse come to the mill, either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. He said, Let me go. For our clan holds a sacrifice in the city, and my brother has commanded me to be there. Then Saul's anger, anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse? Bring him to me, for 
for he shall surely die. And as soon as the boy had gone, David rose from behind the stone heap, and they kissed one another and wept with one another, David weeping the most. And he rose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city.